Hey guys, this is John Carnell, and I am here to kick off our first dev drop for the month of July. So the topic for this month, and along with a number of other dev drops that are going to come out in July, is really around uh, uh, developer tools and some updates around our developer tools. It's been a busy year for us uh, in Genesis Cloud for uh, development tooling because our focus is uh, this year is really about making sure that we give our developers first-class tools to build applications and integrations with our platform. So, you know, earlier in the year, the Genesis Cloud Developer Engagement Team delivered our first command line interface for interacting with the platform using the command line. Basically, our CLI completely wrappers our platform API, which means anything you could write code and script with, you can now invoke via the command line. Very, very powerful tool for administrators and people who have to do quick, small things with the platform, but don't want to write a lot of code. Uh, our architect team has delivered some exciting new capabilities with Archie, the tool that they use for importing and exporting call flows, uh, or not just call flows, any architect flows across our Genesis Cloud organizations. Um, so it allows you to basically say, hey, I'm going to build everything in dev, going to get it looking good with the GUI tool, and promote it uh, to test or production using a human-readable format. Uh, it's some exciting stuff, and I'll get into it a little bit later. And then finally, uh, our latest initiative is CX's Code. And my, my team, along with a number of other developer development teams here, have been collaborating together to build a new DevOps tool that will let you basically represent core Genesis Cloud objects as human-readable uh, text files that can be used to build and integrate into a CI-CD pipeline, a continuous integration, continuous deployment pipeline. For our bigger customers who have sophisticated DevOps shops, this is something that they've been asking a lot for because now you can basically set up your environment, your dev environment, or your Genesis Cloud environment in dev, and then be able to promote those changes without human intervention all the way up to production. But with all these tools coming out, uh, I often get a lot of questions about, hey, which tool should I use? I mean, they all have some overlap in terms of capabilities. What are the use cases uh, for one tool versus another for, from a developer perspective? So, you know, if you look at it, we have five categories or five types of tools for doing development within Genesis Cloud. Our APIs, our SDKs, our uh, CLI, Archie, our command line tool for importing, exporting call flows, and then CX's code. Now, what I tell people with our APIs and SDKs is our APIs and SDKs are specifically used for doing application development or building heavy integrations where you got data transformation, uh, heavy data transformation, business logic being applied, data being moved uh, from Genesis Cloud to an internal database or vice versa. And so that's kind of the space our APIs and SDKs play into. Now the difference between our APIs and our SDKs is our APIs are our low level uh, JSON REST services that pretty much allow you to do anything with our platform. Um, I often tell people the way to think about our APIs is they're Lego blocks. And uh, we are a platform first company uh, with uh, Genesis Cloud. And that means that anything that we as a Genesis Cloud development group build for our users to consume is built on top of our public APIs. We don't maintain separate private APIs that only our software developers can use to build solutions. We build on the same thing as everybody else. However, our APIs are extremely low level in the sense that they are JSON-based calls. And you as a developer using our APIs have to know how to be able to uh, take JSON call uh, JSON payloads and marshal and unmarshal the data, send it over the H, uh, as an HTTP protocol over the web, and then be able to interrogate the HTTP status codes back. It's a pretty low-level programming model. Now, most people I tell them don't use the APIs directly uh, if we have a programming language with our SDKs available to you. Um, our SDKs, our software development kits, are language-specific bindings around our APIs, and our SDKs are generated completely off of our APIs. And as you can see out there, we have uh, language-specific bindings for Java, .NET, Go, JavaScript, Python, so on and so forth. And our SDKs offer a lot of value-added capabilities that are just not present in a lower-level API REST call. 
Some of those capabilities include built-in logging into the SDK, um, marshalling and unmarshalling of the JSON payload uh, from language-specific bindings down to JSON and back and forth. For our static SDKs, we do contract enforcement. So if you try to set a value improperly on a type, our SDK is going to complain about it and you're going to get a failure. So these are all a lot of uh, powerful features and I always tell people don't use our APIs if we have an SDK uh, in the language that you use. Now next comes our command line interface. And our command line interface, I almost treat it like another SDK. We generate it completely off of the platform, but it's basically a tool to be able to interact with our platform from the command line. Now, if you've never done system administration, you might be asking, why the heck would I need a CLI, a command line interface? But for those of us who have done administration and had to work heavily with cloud platforms, uh, been system administrators, DBAs, command line tools are invaluable because they let you do ad hoc tasks very quickly. Um, so for instance, if I needed to dump all of my users from my platform uh, or my Genesis Cloud org into a JSON file, I could do that with a simple command line tool. And I dump out my content and, you know, I can go out and I can look at it. Right, and then from, oh, sorry, typed the wrong thing. And then from there, I can send it to other tools and be able to do stuff. It's a very, very powerful programming model when I have to do uh, a queries or bulk administration, like, hey, uh, we have a thousand agents and 200 of them have skills, and I want to take all the agents with that skill and move them from QA to QB. Now, a lot of times you could do that with our API, but it's a lot of work just to do a simple task, and it's not something that's really suitable for our UI because of the number of uh, uh, people or agents' uh, data that's involved here. So I tell people, use this for administrative tasks, use our CLI for administrative tasks, and uh, uh, maybe some light scripting work. You know, If you start going beyond 100 lines of code, uh, with our CLI, integrating with Python, Java, shell script, whatever, you're probably doing things the wrong way and you should be looking at our SDK. Now, one of the more common questions I get is, hey, can I use uh, the CLI in my CICD pipeline? And the answer is you can, but I would be really careful about doing heavy lifting within your CICD pipeline using the CLI. Uh, the CLI is a wrapper around our APIs. It doesn't allow you to do state management. It doesn't allow you to do dependency management uh, of various artifacts within Genesis Cloud. But you can do simple stuff like if I need to look up a queue or I need to look up a phone number, get a value and pass it to another script, you can do that. Now the next tool I want to talk a little bit about is Archie. Now Archie is built by our architect team. Our architect team basically builds all the, the UI and tooling around uh, our flows, whether they be an email flow, a call flow, or a bot flow. And one of the things that they got a lot of feedback from customers is they needed a way, uh, the customers needed a way to be able to develop their flow in our nice GUI tools, but then promote that flow between environments. And when Archie came out a couple of years ago, they allowed you to import and export your flows using a binary format. The problem with that is, is that's not a human readable format that's easily checked into source control. And because it's not in a human readable format, it can't easily be templatized or parameterized into a DevOps pipeline. So this year, the Archie team finally delivered the capability to build all of your flows directly in a human readable format using YAML or export a flow from an environment into YAML and then import it. And some of our dev jobs that we're going to be doing later on this month are going to cover that topic. But Archie's scope is very narrow. It only deals with call flows. However, if you're doing any kind of serious DevOp works, your DevOp work, you're often going to want to be looking at how can I take an entire stack of functionality within Genesis Cloud like not only my call flows, but my queues, my integration, my data actions, uh, maybe some mappings of users to those queues, and be able to describe that declaratively in a text file and then promote that without human in intervention um, across all of my environments. And that's where CX's code comes into. CX's code is built on Terraform, an open source infrastructure as code tool that lets you describe your infrastructure. In this case, we're going to describe our Genesis Cloud infrastructure 
and be able to manage it uh, in uh, continuous integration, continuous deployment pipeline. It's a very, very powerful concept and you're gonna see a lot of activity over the next couple months from our developers and the developer engagement team as we build content, code examples, and tools around CX's code. When you're talking about doing DevOps with Genesis Cloud, CX's code is where we're gonna really recommend you go. So thanks everybody, this is the end of the dev drop. As usual, if you like the video, please like it, add comments, dislike it. And also, if there's content out there that uh, you want to see, drop us a message on the developer forum. You know, our developer forum is accessible directly from uh, our developer center, but, you know, post out there. Ask us, hey, I've seen, I, I really like this API. I'd love to see some content around it. Or could you please build some uh, content around this particular problem space? We're always looking for new content ideas, and we're, we're always geared towards trying to find content that is usable by our development community. So thanks again, everybody, and let's build something together.